Black Views. I'm Howard Sandiford. Today we have a very special guest, Mr. Terrell Johnson, Executive Director of the Chicago Philharmonic Society. Welcome, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. I've been really looking forward to getting a chance to meet with you. Um, 19, no, 2021, you were appointed the Executive Director of the Chicago Philharmonic Society. That's a Congratulations. Thank you. Um, tell us a little bit about, first of all, tell us a little bit about the orchestra, would you please? Um, well, yes, yeah, so uh, the Chicago Philharmonic is a very interesting organization because um, t typically an orchestra like ours, you'd have a certain type of board structure where you have community members on the board and you'd have the separation and then with the artists in the orchestra. And um, with the Phil, it was founded uh, with the purpose of, of having this collaboration between musicians and, and community members. So we were founded by the Lyric Opera musicians. They wanted to get out of the pit and, and be featured on stage. And, and so that's, that's kind of the, the origin of the organization 34 years ago. And from that, um, board members uh, are also traditional people on the, in the community, doctors, lawyers. We also have um, half of the board are all musicians. Mm -hmm. And so that has created like a really significant harmony you know, yes. with the organization. Uh, and it's been like something that's really been a large part of our DNA is having that um, governance model where the musicians, the artists um, on stage are also governing and steering the organization's uh, trajectory. So I'd say that's one of the main things that distinguishes the Phil. Um, from like a traditional orchestra structure. The other thing is, is we're kind of like a representation of the entire music ecosystem in Chicago because we have our lyric opera musicians, we have musicians with, the, with I think seven orchestras are represented, at least seven orchestras. And, um, and so it's, it's really a great snapshot of like the high level of artistry in Chicago you know, music. So, um, and yeah, I, and I joined in 2021 in June. Um, the previous, my predecessor, Donna Milanovic, was executive director. Um, and prior to that, she was actually a musician in the orchestra. She played flute. And so she's with the organization, I think, just over 30 years. So, um, but it's been, it's a, been a fantastic opportunity and experience uh, to, to lead this organization and serve these musicians. Wonderful. What are some of your responsibilities? <laughs> That's sure a question. A long, a long <laughs> list, I'm certain. Yeah, so uh, I, I always say we're small but mighty. So we're a small team. We have the, our staff, there's, there's nine folks on staff. And so I kind of wear a lot of hats. Um, I spend uh, the, my time um, with the artistic team, doing artistic planning, working with Scott Speck, our artistic director, in regards to our programming. I also uh, spend lots of time with marketing and how you know we'll, we'll um, promote all these performances we're doing, and then with community engagement um, in terms of like our academy music performance and supporting that staff member who leads those programs and also our side by side program, which takes place every summer. We have a side by side coming up uh, in July. Um, I, 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 I think I probably, you know, I don't, I have a desk, I have an office, but I spend most of my time with my laptop sitting next to another team member, uh, and either supporting or just being collaborative. So d you had to define it. Uh, I would say I am a little, I dabble in lots of areas. Uh, I, I fundraise for the organization as well. And I get to do opportunities like this and speak on behalf of the, of the, the orchestra uh, to promote the work we're doing. So um, I, I, I think it depends on who you ask. Like, I think people would have a, a slightly different definition of what my role is um, uh, at that given moment. But it's been great to kind of have you know, many pots active at once and to be kind of supporting everything. Right. When you came in uh, as executive director of the organization, it was a challenging time. 
needless to say, we're, we're coming out of COVID. And additionally, the state of classical music, if you will, was quite gloomy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, what were your thoughts coming into the office and how you wanted to approach steering the organization in these uh, troubling waters, if you will? So, yeah, well, I, I think in our industry, the, the biggest challenge, especially when I started, um, is, is bringing folks back. Mm -hmm. Like you know, bringing people back to to listening to music live and in person. Um, uh, we were a little lucky with the summer months. It was a little you know there are ways to do things. When I started, we were doing like backlot Beethoven concerts outside at the North Shore Center for Performing Arts, and and folks were just starting to get back inside venues. Um, and and so I think the, the biggest challenge was is retention. It's like is some donors. Still, there was there was a time of uncertainty, so people were nervous. To, is, is this the right time to come come back? People are just starting to get vaccinated, and mm -hmm. um, and so I think it was really a question of how do we define this group and what we're programming and what we're offering to be incredibly enticing to bring folks back to hear you know an experience unlike anything else, like hearing music live. Um, so that was really the focus for a really long time was, was um, audience retention and just uh, activating them and bringing new, we, we brought so many new concert members in over the last two years. And, and so it was a challenge, but I, I feel like we've had such tremendous growth over the last two years with new patrons attending our shows. Um, when I got this role and I joined in June, my wife and I were looking for places to live. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Chicago previously, moved in the South Loop. We moved back to the South Loop, but we were looking in Bronzeville originally, and it was like, it was, it was Juneteenth weekend, and there was all these Juneteenth celebrations happening. And my first thought was like, I would love to do something with this orchestra on Juneteenth. And, and so one year later, like tireless, tireless planning with, the, with our small staff, we did the premiere of uh, Marvel Studios Black Panther in concert at the Chicago Theater. We had Masamba Jope from Senegal, who was the original soloist of Black Panther and was the, is kind of like the star of the show um, and represents Black Panther, represents T'Challa. And, and so, um, I, I, concerts like that, experiences like that, where we were tying really strongly into the community, putting a program on, June, week, on Juneteenth weekend that celebrates black artistry and had this you know, fantastic soloist. There's also like that, that instrument. That's not a non. That's a non-traditional mm -hmm. instrument for a symphonic orchestra to have a tom and drum, um, but he was just a brilliant artist, and so opportunities like that are what brought people back to to the concert hall. That was a you know full sold out show. So strategic planning like that, like programming shows uh, in a way that are not only an you know an escape, but they're they're such a high level of art that we're exposing people to. And that's been the strategy from that time and you know, moving forward into this season and, so, and moving forward into the future seasons. Right, and that was really, and if you really do some innovative programming, that's really exciting. Um, what do you like best about your job? Oh, best. Uh, talking to people like you is, is, is really nice, you know, Howard, and uh, okay. um, let's see. I, I mean, I, I really love being a part of the artistic process mm -hmm. and getting to support that group. We, um, we have a, a committee of musicians in the orchestra as well as the artistic um, director uh, who curate all of our programs. And so it's a very collaborative um, sessions of like uh, talking about you know, new, new artists coming in and like this would be a great opportunity for us or this is a world premiere we could do. And those like really exciting conversations. Uh, we, we had an artist just three weeks ago named Kishibashi. Mm -hmm. And Kishibashi is a violinist, pianist, singer, songwriter. Uh, he does kind of a little, he's a little bit of everything. And um, he had a really interesting piece. And it was called uh, Improvisations on EO 9066, mm -hmm. which he's a Japanese American. And this, um, this improvisation, this piece, is specifically about the internment of Japanese citizens. And it was very fascinating. Um, topic, you know, like it was something I didn't really, it was very glossed over, I didn't learn it in school, I didn't know but yeah, there was 120,000 Japanese Americans interred and displaced and it was really interesting 
that he went to all these different sites in the Midwest where these people relo were relocated and he did these improvisations and they captured this and he made it this visual kind of um, hybrid uh, performance um, and it was incredibly powerful and something I feel like just like people haven't seen before um, and he had these looper pedals that he uses to augment what he's doing with his violin and with his guitar um, and the opportunity to bring someone like that to Chicago and to bring a story like that that's you know kind of untold was an absolute treat for me and so it's one of the best parts about this this job and being able to collaborate with our artistic you know um, uh, committee to to program those things has been just a, a gift so right. Right. It's really exciting the work that you're doing and you've done thus far. Can't wait to see what you continue to do. Um, cultural diversity is always an issue, again, specifically in classical music, uh, in the boardroom and outside of the boardroom and in the orchestra, if you will. Um, the kind of programming that you're doing, you're bringing in artists of all races, nationalities, genders, uh, some really creative artists who have not had this kind of exposure before. Mm -hmm. And uh, this apparently, I was very clearly, you're doing this intentionally. This is not by accident. Uh, additionally, again, you also are one of the few uh, executive directors of a major orchestra, if you will. Um, how do you feel about that? I mean, is, 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 is it, have you, are there certain obstacles that you've, you've encountered that, uh, I mean, just you, you may not have anticipated? Sure, I, I think um, it's, you know, it's, it's this position, I, I talk to folks who have similar roles and sometimes it's, it's it can be isolating because it's very unique, it's a very unique job and, and then being, you know, a person of color in the position is also a unique perspective that's added to it and um, I, I think there are, um, the challenges I've, I've had, um, I've kind of, had the support system. So I was um, in, a, in an executive leadership program with the Sphinx organization. And so uh, I had a, a cohort of nine other folks and we all traveled to other distinguished universities and symphonies and um, met and talked about a lot of the challenges that you know, folks of color and, and, and similar positions to us face. And, um, and so this is like that network has been they're kind of like your, my personal board of directors, is, is what folks. But it's been said before, uh, and so it's been great to like have that that group of people, that you know that support system for two years, with folks that, and similar roles throughout the throughout the country, and to be able to just like to talk about it, like you know, we're, we're, like how are you working with fundraising? What's like what are, what's your strategy? Or you know, in terms of DEI, like there are lots of um, different type of. Um, uh, new programs that are being created and like how have you been able to to keep them like sustain these programs and to not let them fizzle out mm -hmm. and lose momentum over you know the last two years that we've gained so much uh, momentum and so I, I think it's been really important to have like that network of folks to that creative group but also that support group uh, um, I think it's like really essential in a role like this and it's like Either you, you, I think it's important for people to build that group too, to have that like your personal board, you know, board, um, board of directors, and it's like people who you who are close to you that you trust, that um, will also call you out if you're making a bad decision. Um, uh, I think it's really important. So I, I think there's there's always challenges in any, in any um, position we'll have, but I think it's important that when you address those challenges, you're doing it in a way that's you know. Um, considerate, mindful of other people's experiences, because sometimes I could, you know, be thinking, well, uh, this isn't working out, but I'm not. I might not see the bigger picture. But one of my colleagues has a, you know, alternate um, suggestion, so always to listen to the team and to value their opinions, um, and it takes time. Sometimes I also let things like. Let me just. Pa I'm gonna hold this for a, a little bit before I respond immediately, because maybe after I have a diet coke or something, I'll have a different, uh, you know, outlook on it. So, uh, those are the tools I have right now, and I think it, it, you know, it continues to expand. But right, that's we'll great. Let's talk a little bit about your background. Where, where were you born? Where did you go to school? And yeah. uh, um, so I was born in North New Jersey, and we moved to Florida shortly after that, um, in South. West Florida, so I spent most of my time in 
Lehigh Acres, Florida, and then went to elementary school there, and then um, as well as middle school. And that's when I really got started in music, it was right around the early, just before middle school, I started playing piano. And um, no one in my family, I don't have musicians really like, like trained musicians, I guess, in my family. I have lots of music enthusiasts. My mom always had music playing in the house. Um, I started playing piano just about the end of elementary school. And then I had a band director um, in middle school who was like, you know, you are, you're kind of, um, I was really interested in it and she could tell. Mm -hmm. And so she pushed me, so you should do Allstate, you should do these things. Mm -hmm. And I was the only one, my mom would come along with me and she was, uh, you know, she's my biggest cheerleader and would go to these different competitions. And, um, and then I got a really fantastic teacher when I moved uh, to Fort Myers and went to the Cypress Lake High School Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was still playing clarinet and piano and he was my piano teacher, but he was a retired uh, band director. Um, and he uh, was, he, he didn't teach clarinet necessarily, but he could tell I was very good at it. And so he decided, let's switch the focus and we'll do more clarinet than piano. So I switched to more of my time was on clarinet. And then I got into this uh, performing arts high school and um, it was kind of like hyper focused. Mm -hmm. it was, the majority of your day, where I had you know four music classes a day, so it's four and a half four and a half hours a day of just music. And then I, the the campus you walk across the street to go to the high school for your like your math and your core classes, and from there um, this was this school had dance and visual art and all the, all the disciplines. I'm like it was very interesting because they all, like we all kind of each department the school was very well structured where students would. Like the musicians would do the musicals, we, we'd be the, the live musicians, and then the visual artists would create the sets. And so it was like a, like a, such a hyper-focused um, space uh, to cultivate talent. And from there I went to, after high school, I went to University of Central Florida for undergrad and um, studied music performance there for clarinet and was in orchestra and band and and I was only, I, I, had, I did marching band in high school and just had fun, and so I decided I'll just do marching band in college, it was, it was fun, and get to go on trips as well. And so I was the only person in the College of Music that was in wind, wind ensemble, orchestra, and marching band. And um, uh, met my wife in marching band, and um, who was also a clarinetist, so picking the instrument worked out. <laughs> um, and I studied with a really fantastic teacher there, uh, Dr. Keith Coons, and he, um, you know, was a great mentor, and then from from uh, undergrad, I went to grad school at the, at the Florida State University and studied with Frank Kowalski. And Dr. Kowalski was a really great pedagogue and just um, showed me how to like really develop my sound as a musician. And in grad school, it's like I was in such a great space just to. I feel like that's when I really started to get a lot of the tools that I use now. Um, in this position and the work I did you know, before even coming to the Chicago Phil. And then after, after moving, um, after grad school, I moved to Chicago. And I had created a studio of about 40 clarinet piano students here and I gigged and I had so many, so many jobs. I <laughs> worked at like a musical theater marketing place, which I use a lot of that uh, now. And I worked um, as a recruiter for Chicago High School for the Arts. and. Um, I, uh, I felt like I didn't have a, a second off, but it was really, really a great experience for you know, a 22 year old. So, and from there I actually you know, spent several years doing that and um, I went to the, moved back to Florida with my wife and then started working at the New World Symphony, which is a um, really fantastic uh, space that was founded by Michael Tilson Thomas. And I worked at New World for seven years. I worked in business development at New World Symphony. I um, uh, also worked in community engagement there. And it's, you know, it's a training facility for you know, the most talented young musicians in the country. So folks are coming from Juilliard, from, uh, from Northwestern, West from DePaul, uh, from all corners of the United States of really just distinguished uh, music backgrounds. And um, that was a really great experience for me 
to uh, support those musicians and also coach them and, and also be their guide in, in community engagement programs and to lead those programs with them. And then after that, I got the opportunity to join the Chicago Philharmonic and lead this organization. And it's been a you know, fantastic experience. And all of everything I, you know, I've done leading up to it has helped me to, to be prepared for this role. Um, so it's a very long-winded uh, kind of uh, story of, of, of my journey so far. It's an exciting journey. Thank you for sharing that with us. Interesting. What, what drew you to classical music? It's interesting. Because I know you've worked with various styles of music, but uh. oh, that's a good question. Um, there was a there was a recording when I was a kid of Richard Stoltzman playing the Mozart Clarinet Concerto, and it sounded so cool. I was like blown away and thought, like, oh man, I could do this. Like, I could, I could do this, and um, I would listen to that constantly, constantly listen to that recording, and. Um, and so I think it was the discipline too. My mom is a very, very um, you know, disciplined person. Like when I was a kid, and I started on piano. She put a, uh, the, the tape recorder in every lesson. She recorded every lesson. When I got home, I had to then like recreate that lesson and play the tape recorder. And then she would also record me, like all my practice. She would record all my practice and I would time, she would time it every day. I had to practice three hours every day. Um, and so I, there was lots of like structure and discipline in classical music, but I think it's also great. Um, uh, just like you can carry that to any other discipline. Yes. You know, I know folks who my wife is an optometrist. Like folks have taken the, what they've learned, the the structure and discipline in music, and taken it to other fields. Um, and I feel like there's so much foundation um, there. So it's such a great tool for people to have, like young musicians or young the students to, to yes. experience in school. So it's it's you know it's something that's so valuable. So. I would say I really appreciated the structure and the um, like careful attention to detail from that Mozart clarinet concerto yes. recording and all of that and the camaraderie of playing with people and that experience of playing live, those are things that really drew me to classical music and just like live music in general. Sure, got it. You know, our video podcast is called Black Muse. Um, who was your muse? Who inspired you? Who believed in you? Oh, well, who believed in me? I would say my, my mom was a single mom, and so she, um, I don't know how she did it, and I would say she really, really invested a lot in me um, when I was young, and, and, and I think was definitely someone who um, made sure I had the tools, you know, to be successful. And, and then there's other people, you know, I just, like I have friends that I admire so much growing up. I, there's no way I could, you do these things alone. And like my, you know, some of my best friends um, <clears throat> who are all in different fields now. But I remember like playing in the pit, like playing in musicals with those kids and having the most amazing experience. And still looking back into this day, like we're talking on the phone, we're talking about like something, we're talking about their kids. And I'm like, oh, it will kind of reminisce about um, all those great opportunities, us performing together, or going on trips and, and, and performing, and um, and so I feel like it's a collection of these experiences with um, with fellow musicians, and it's not even it's not even it's the journey. It's not even like the no, performance. It was like all that practice and preparation leading up, um, all those uh, like all those instances of inspiration. Um, today I, I visited. Um, um, uh, Congressman Danny K. Davis, and they were doing these, um, at the opportunity to evaluate lots of artwork for this competition. And even experiences like that were very inspiring, like seeing hundreds of pieces of art by folks who are probably like 14 to 18, and looking at, like, from their lens, like, some of this stuff, I don't even know how they imagined right. some of this work, and that's, that's so inspiring. And then, so I feel like there's just lots of areas of inspiration that comes from art and just from like small interactions that people carry with them. So it's kind of like a combination of all that mm -hmm. um, is uh, what's been my inspiration. As we get ready to wrap up this interview, I, I, first of all, thank you. This is you know, most interesting and we're excited about all the work that you're doing here in Chicago. Um, is there anything else you would like to share with us about you and or about the uh, 
Chicago Philharmonic Society. Sure. Well, uh, I guess about me, everyone knows I love the movies. So if I'm not playing music, I'm most likely sneaking off and having you know some chocolate chip cookies and watching a movie. Um, that's like my favorite pastime. Um, or hanging out with my children. I have uh, you know two boys who are one is just becoming a young musician and just learning how to play violin. Um, my wife is a fantastic cook, and then she also experiments with cooking. So it's always fun to to um, you know be the be the one who gets to sample those experiments. Um, and then about the Philharmonic, I would say it's such a fantastic organization, doing really amazing work, like dynamic work in the city. Where the Phil is one of those organizations where you can see, like this fall, we're going to work with Ryan Speedo Green, who's a bass baritone, and um, on October 14th, we're doing a concert with him. It's going to feature works by uh, Terrence Blanchard from his um, uh, opera and jazz champion, as well as his opera uh, Fire Shut Up My Bones. We have other like masterworks um, for opera. Ryan is a, an amazing bass baritone. But then right before that, we're at the Auditorium Theater on September 30th with Tank and the Bangas, who's a soul, it's a soul group. Tariana Tank is a fantastic singer. And like that concert, they're so, the, the, the level of art is incredibly high, but the programs are so different. And, and so I think it's such an amazing thing, like the way the Philharmonic works that, that you can catch us with. We perform with Lady Gaga, perform with Joshua Bell, you know, and you can see us in so many different spaces throughout the city. We'll be at Ravinia this summer uh, doing family concerts with, um, uh, we're doing the 30th anniversary of Jurassic Park. We have Encanto in concert. We're also working with Marin Alsop to do a four day um, uh, seminario. This will be master classes, coaching lessons, uh, side by side performance with the musicians of the Philharmonic and 130 musicians from across the country. And, you know, Marin Ossop is you know, one of the, you know, it's legendary uh, art, you know, artists and conductor. And f for young musicians throughout the country to have the experience to work with our musicians, and also Marin, it's like something they'll carry with them throughout their careers, uh, whether in music or any other space. And we've intentionally chosen this program to not focus on, um, a particular skill level, it's more focused on a particular need. Like, because we want to create the next generation of music lovers. So it's, it's really exciting to host that festival this summer and to just bring the most dynamic programs to Chicago. So that really, I think that captures the Philharmonic in its essence. And so I encourage people to go to chicagophilharmonic.org and, and check out the upcoming events we have. Outstanding. Again, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you very much, it's been my pleasure.